Hello, 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 hello. Happy Tuesday. Everybody that's tuning in, what y'all up to? It's Tuesday. Can you believe it? It's Tuesday again already. What's up, guys? It's your girl, Kira Cherie. Kira means shining light. And Cherie means beloved. And I am so excited. I'm so honored. I'm always so excited. I'm always so honored. But I'm really excited today because we're on part two of what happens when God asks us to wait. So if you're watching now live or later, tune in. Let me know you guys are here. Drop a hello in the comments. Um, but before we get started, we actually get an opportunity to pray. And so I just want you to bow your head wherever you are, unless you're driving, <laughs> unless you're watching later. Um, but let's petition the Lord and, and just ask him for his blessings. Father God, in Jesus name, Lord, we thank you for this day that you have given us, God, May 11th, 2021. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, your keeping power. Lord, even in the middle of all of the things that are going bad in this world, Lord, you are still good and you are still God. And so God, we give you glory. We reverence your name. God, we ask that you would touch every person, Lord, that is in a waiting season. God, strengthen them. Help them not to give up before their time. Lord, I thank you that you will touch every person that's sick in their body, people who are dealing with loss, God, people who are just in a state of confusion. Lord, we come against a spirit of darkness. And God, we thank you for your marvelous light. And so we give you all the glory, the honor, the praise, in Jesus name. Amen. What's up, you guys? It's so good to see you. Uh, for those of you who are just tuning in, my name is Kira Cherie. Kira means shining light and Cherie means beloved. In all of April, the Lord was dealing with me and is still dealing with me about waiting. Now, I know when we say the word wait, sometimes people get upset. They don't want to wait. Right. And I am I am culprit. Number one, if you're watching live now, uh, now, or later, please hop in the comments. Tell me what's up. Hey, Katina, it's good to see you. We're talking tonight, Katina, about waiting. What happens when God asks us to wait? And last week, um, he had given us a great, ac an, a great acronym, uh, the letters W-A-I-T. The W was for wisdom. Who remembers that from last week? That we need wisdom when we wait. Because when we don't get wisdom from God, we just take off and start doing dumb stuff. We start wilding out. That while you're waiting, this is not the time for you to try to go around and manipulate a situation and get out of your integrity. And the T was for to trust God, that we don't need to doubt him. And the wonderful thing about last week's lesson, we talked about Thomas and how God knows where I am. Somebody put that in the comments already. Say, God knows where I am. If that's you, I want you to tune in because today we're going to talk about who is actually waiting for God? And when God says to wait, what are you actually waiting for? I know a lot of times we get these notions in our mind or we have these ambitions. And I always talk about the vision boards and all of these things that we want to happen in our lives. And sometimes God says, wait. So now I'm talking to people who are serious about something different in their life. If you're watching now, live or later, and you're ready for something to change in your life, you've been doing it your way and it's not working, and you're ready to actually make a change, I want you to know that sometimes that change, that transition requires you to wait. And so if you're watching, you're paying attention, I want you to know that God is not asking you to wait for no reason. There is a reason that God asks you to wait. There's a reason why God wants you to wait. And so the question might be, well, what am I waiting for? You know, I see all of these things out there. I know that there are times, even when myself, I'm talking to entrepreneurs, I'm telling them to jump. It's time for you to move forward. And sometimes we're in that season where if you wait, you're going to miss something. But sometimes when God's doing deeper work, come on, somebody say deeper work. Listen, if you're watching today, and you know that God has asked you to wait. Somebody might say, well, Kira, how do I know that God has asked me to wait? Because it's not sitting well with your spirit. Some things aren't just quite how you would feel or want them to feel. And so God is may he may be putting the brakes on some of our plans. He may be putting the brakes on some of our relationships. He might be putting the brakes on some of our purchases, things that have detrimental uh, impacts, whether that's a good impact or a bad impact. 
If God has asked you to wait on something, I want you to get in the comments and say, Kira, that's me. God has asked me to wait, but I don't know what I'm waiting for. And a lot of times we have in our mind what we're waiting for. I'm waiting for summer because I want to go do this thing, or I'm waiting for this man, or I'm waiting for this woman, or I'm waiting for this job to open up, or I'm waiting for this opportunity. My question to you today is, what are you waiting for? Do you know what you're waiting for? Well, before you get to that, I want you to know who is waiting with you. See, waiting is personal. Somebody say waiting is personal. Y'all ain't talking to me. Who's in the comments already today? Hey, Carla, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, God is working with us because he's trying to get something to us. So the question is, who's waiting with you? Somebody say waiting is personal. It's a personal thing. When you're waiting, it's about you. When you're waiting, it's about the path and the plan and the direction that has for you. Somebody say waiting is personal. Waiting is personal. So it's very, very important that you know who is waiting with you. And once you identify who's waiting with you, then you need to really try to check your circle. Now I talk about checking your circle a lot because the people who you're around have a huge impact. The Bible says that you become like the companions that you keep, right? The world says birds of a feather do what? flock together. And so if you are around somebody who's not conditioned to waiting, they might push you forward before you're ready. They may try to set you up with something that God is not ready to give you. So it's important that you know who you're waiting with. Somebody say waiting is a personal thing. Now, listen, if you're tuning in, we're talking about waiting. This is not this. This is not the live where we talk about everything that God's going to give you and how fast it's coming. This is about building personal character and waiting takes uh, strength. It's not for weak folks. Waiting is not for people who are just needing something fast, quick in a hurry, because we already know that if I'm waiting, something good is coming to me. Somebody put that in the comments, say, God's got something good for me. I'm going to say it for myself. God's got something good for you, Kira. That's why he's asking you to wait. So if you are waiting, you need to know what are you waiting for? First, you also need to find out who's waiting with you. Who is waiting with you? If you've got somebody in your life that can tell you the truth, that's a good person to have in the waiting room with you. If you've got somebody in your life who is going to tell you everything is a yes and everything is all hunky-dory and there's never any problems, that's not somebody you want waiting with you. Think about Job. Job was in a waiting season that he didn't even ask for. Okay, hello, somebody. You know, a waiting season is not something we sign up for. Yes, Lord, I'll take waiting season for 200. Nobody's signing up for waiting. But sometimes when we're in a waiting season, God can allow some things to fall out of your life. Hello, good, good afternoon for everybody that's tuning in. God may be having you in a waiting season because he knows if he has you waiting long enough, those things that are around you, those people who are in your life will fall away and they're not to be in the next part of wherever God is going to take you. When you come out of a waiting season, this is so good. Listen to what God is saying. He will have you positioned to wait alone or with the right people in the room. Because maybe if they wait around long enough, they'll give up. Maybe if they wait around long enough, they'll say, uh, never mind, I didn't want this, I changed my mind. So if you are not clear about who is in the waiting room with you of your life in this season, if they can't stick it out, they're not for what's next. If they can't hang on, they're not for what's next. Now, every time that God allows me to share, please know that I'm always talking to myself first. Why? Because God is interested in making sure that all of us, everybody, including me, is prepared for what he has next for us. So what are we doing tonight? What are we waiting for? We're identifying Who's in the waiting room with you? Check your circle. Somebody say, check your circle, check your circle, check your circle. Check your circle. Who's in your waiting room? 
Maybe God knows that if they will wait long enough and he can keep you in that position, that they'll leave when it's time for them to leave. Be positioned to wait alone. I make a lot of confessions and I type them out and I put them in different places because I really believe that my words have power. Somebody say words have power, words have power. I believe that whatever I speak over myself is what's going to come to me. Why? Because the Bible says those things that I speak, whatsoever I say, I will have those things. So it's important that you understand that. So I have a confession that I've written and a part of that confession says, I am learning how to be comfortable in silence. And I realize that I'm never alone because God is with me. But how many of you all know that God doesn't show up in the form of a person? That when we are waiting, sometimes it is just you. It is just your flesh, your body. Nobody else is on this part of your journey for a reason. And so if God has you waiting and you're saying, God, what am I waiting for? One thing you're waiting for is to get in position. That was point number one. Point number one, if you're listening now, live or later, we're talking part two about when God asks you to wait. Because if he's asking you to wait, he's preparing you for something. Somebody say, God's preparing me for something. One is who's waiting with you. Position yourself to wait alone. Make yourself successful. Do the things that you need to do so that when you have to wait, you're not out here wilding out trying to add people that God's trying to take away. All right, let me move on. Point number two, waiting without conditions. Somebody who's in the chat say, I can't wait and have conditions too. I can't wait conditions too. Part of what happens when we wait is we get really, really anxious, right? At the beginning, you're like, I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait. And then we end up surrendering. Somebody say, I surrender all God. I surrender all. And then when the waiting doesn't end fast enough, <laughs> we start wanting to put conditions on God. How many of you know God is not somebody that we can manipulate? Manipulation is not waiting. Manipulation is not waiting. I can't twist God's arm and ask him to hurt the process. I can't cry. I can't pray. I can't fast. I can't prove to him that I'm being here a good Christian. So God, go on and give me what you have for me. It doesn't work like that. Somebody say it don't work like that. If you're watching and you are dealing with waiting, and waiting is a thorn in your side. Somebody say, that's me. I'm saying it first. That's me. Waiting is a thorn in my side. And sometimes if I'm not careful, ooh, we, I can find myself trying to manipulate the waiting season. Well, I'm going to do all of these things and then I'm going to go back and petition God or I'm going to help God. I'm going to remind God. I'm going to go out here and try to make it work on my own and then present it to God and say, what you think about this, Lord? Am I the only one? Is anybody else being honest tonight that sometimes we find ourselves, even as believers, trying to manipulate the waiting process? Sometimes we can say, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm finished early. Well, you know, that's almost the same as cooking a meal and it not being finished. And you're trying to eat that thing and you know that it's not good. You know, it's going to make you sick later. You know that it's not going to add to your body in a healthy way. You know that you're just going to have to go back and prepare a meal all over again. Why don't you wait? Why don't you just wait? Because waiting is hard sometimes. Somebody say waiting is hard. Talking about why God asks us to wait and what are we waiting for? We know that we need to understand who's waiting with us. Sometimes God let that thing go on because he's trying to get some folks out the way. Position yourself to be able to wait alone. Point number two is wait without conditions. Don't try to manipulate the situation with God. Don't try to manipulate the situation with yourself. If you know that there's a season for whatever it is that you're going through, don't manipulate it. Don't try to fix it on the back end. Somebody say, that's me. I'm always trying to fix something. Who's in these comments? Let me tell you something. Pat Green, words do have power. Pat Green says words have power. Words have so much power. And a lot of times when we speak on a thing, we think that that's what it's going to be. But if your words are not lined up with God's plan for your life, somebody say that. 
Say, God, let my words line up with your plan for my life. I wish I could type my own comments. That feels so good to me. I'm going to say it again. God, let my words line up with your plan for my life. Oh, manipulation is not waiting. And not only is it not waiting, it won't work. Somebody can put that in the comments. Manipulation never works. It never works. It is a temporary fix and you will always have to go back and start over. Part of waiting and having that testing season in your life really is to complete the test, not cheat the test. Is to complete the test, not cheat the test. Not look at what your neighbor did and try to duplicate his walk. <laughs> Not look at what somebody else did. Well, I'm going to just do what she did. And then God's going to give me X, Y, and Z. No, 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 no. Because waiting is personal. Remember, you just said that. Position yourself to wait alone. Waiting is a personal thing. And so you can't look at somebody else and try to manipulate the outcome and think that that was the end of your waiting season. You will always have to repeat it. Okay. Point number three, wait on one thing at a time. <laughs> now, even when I typed that, I started thinking about how um, strategic, how detailed God is asking us to be, even with the wait. Because waiting, if I'm waiting on something, I'm just going to wait, try to get everything in all at once. That way I'm finished waiting on everything. Wait on one thing at a time. And the Lord started dealing with me about this last week after last week's live. Last week, we talked about wisdom, attitude, integrity, and trust. Wait. And he started telling me that we don't want to wait on him. We'll wait on everybody else. We'll wait on everything else, but we don't want to wait on him. And I said, well, God, you know, sometimes it's hard to wait on you. I do be talking to the Lord like that. Why? Because I have a relationship with him. You should too. Somebody say you should talk to God like that. You should talk to God like that. Point number three is wait on one thing at a time. Why? Because now you can focus Part of things that happen when you wait is that you become strong in areas of weakness because you conditioned yourself to sit down and behave until it's over. And however long it takes for it to be over is the thing that you're waiting for. But don't miss what happens in the middle. Somebody say, don't miss the middle. Put that in the comments. If you're watching now live or later, and a lot of people watch later, say, don't miss the middle. Because the middle is the strengthening part of your life. The middle is the proving part of your life. The, move, the middle is the preparation part of your life. It's the part of the weight that God wanted in the first place. Oh, Jesus. That middle section of the weight, that's the part that God was always after. He was always after who you become in the middle. Somebody say who you become in the middle matters. Listen, people, waiting is not easy, but it's so rewarding. Waiting can be a daunting task, especially if you haven't fixed your attitude that this is something that I'm just going to do. And whatever the lesson is that God's trying to teach me, wow, it's only for my own good. Everything that God does for us is for our own good. So if God has you in a waiting season, guess what? Say, it's for my good. It's for my good. It's for my good. But God wants us to be conditioned enough. He wants us to be seasoned. He wants us to be mature enough to wait on one thing at a time. Don't try to heal your heart and be preparing for your mate at the same time. Woo. It's crickets now. I'm going to say it again. Don't be trying to heal your heart. Those of you who are coming out of a divorce or you're coming out of a relationship or something just didn't end the way that you thought it would end. How many of you have been there? Me. Don't be trying to heal from your divorce and prepare yourself for your next mate at the same time. Wait on God to do one thing at a time. Because whatever healing needs to take place from your last relationship and however that ended, you need to identify what happened in that thing. 
what part of this was my fault? Okay, this is for somebody because the Lord had me waiting right here, waiting right here. What part of that was my partner's fault? What part of this do I need to own? What didn't I do? That's a part of healing is being honest. That happens when you wait. That's why God lets you sit down because he knows that you don't uh, you don't even know what you what you need to be doing. So he will say, let's let's put the brakes on this real fast. And why don't you wait for a second? Because if you wait long enough, you'll start to feel and heal and listen to your body. Your heart will start telling you things and revealing things to you that you had forgot all about that need to be healed. But if you're rushing all the time, if you're just in one relationship and on to the next when it doesn't work out, well, you have no idea what's going on. But when you sit alone in silence with God, you can hear all kinds of things. That's why he wants you to wait. It's not because he doesn't want you to be partnered. It's not because he doesn't have someone for you. It's because he wants you to heal. This is for someone. If this is for you and you're watching, I want you to know that God has not forgotten about you. God knows where you are. He knows what hurt you. He knows what hurt you did. And he is having you to wait for a reason. That's why you got to do one thing at a time. That's why you got to be okay with not trying to lump it all together. Because once you get that healing done, now you can be whole and you can learn how to be with yourself and love you and find out what you like and do the things that you want to do and go where you want to go and buy what you want to buy and fix those things that you've always wanted to fix about yourself. See, when you talk about who's waiting with you and positioning yourself to be alone, I know what I'm talking about, y'all. God will give you a new idea. He'll give you a new revelation about who he intended for you to be. And alone is a very good place when you know who you are. Somebody say alone is a good place when I know who I am. So don't try to lump it all together. That's point number three. Don't try to lump it all together. Wait on one thing at a time. So if you are waiting on your healing, wait on your healing. Let that thing totally heal. Don't treat your heart and your spirit and your soul like you do sometimes a wound or a sprain and you just got to hurry up and go back to work and your body's not ready and you force things. And so now you're medicating the pain, but your body's still healing. Let yourself heal. Give yourself time to be whole again. Allow yourself an opportunity to hear what God is saying to you. Be honest with what happened and how that thing affected your life. You know, we talk about mental health all the time and trauma, and we talk about depression and darkness, but a lot of that is because we don't give ourselves permission to wait. We just go from one thing to the next. We have a traumatic situation and we just become desensitized and we don't ever process. Somebody say, waiting is a process. And there's something in that process that makes me better. There's something in that process that will prepare me for what happens when I come out of the weight. Now, once you become healed about this one situation and you've allowed God to show you some things, we're talking about waiting on one thing at a time. Now you can get prepared for whatever God may say next for you. And he may not say relationship next. That part. You're trying to get healed so you can get a next relationship. He might say uh, ministry next. He might say business next. He might say restoration with your children next. Oh, 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 oh. Don't you know when you've been trauma traumatized, your children have been too? Talking about waiting on one thing at a time. You can't help somebody or be a help to somebody if in your waiting process, you didn't do anything, you tried to manipulate it. God is after something in your life. He's trying to bring good things to us, but he wants us prepared so that we can handle it the right way. 
So wait on one thing at a time. Are you guys still with me? You're watching now live or later. Tonight is part two about when God asks you to wait. And the question of the day was, well, what am I waiting for, Lord? And we found out it's important for us to know who's waiting with us. Be okay with waiting alone. Wait without conditions. Don't try to manipulate the situation. And last thing is, wait on one thing at a time. Don't try to rush that thing. Don't try to speed through because you don't want to deal with it. After you have accepted that this is what God is wanting you to do, and then he gives you what's next in your life, somebody say he'll always give you what's next because he's a God of plan. He's a God of purpose. He's a generational God. God don't stand still. God is spirit and he moves and he's got something for you to do on this earth. God is a numbers man. As much as he is in eternity and he's not conditioned and held to time, he is a numbers man. He says, I know every head of hair that you have on your head. I know every number. I've numbered every single hair on your head. He's a numbers guy. He's interested in you moving forward. He's interested in a return on his investment in your life. And so wait on one thing at a time. And then the Lord told me this week, he said, the scripture, this is what God said to me. He said, the scripture is wait on the Lord, comma, not wait on the Lord for a new car, not wait on the Lord for a new job, not wait on the Lord for a new man, not wait on the Lord for a new house. You see where I'm going? You see where I'm going? You see where I'm going? Somebody says, I'm listening, Kira. The scripture is wait on the Lord. So the, the, to answer the question, what are we waiting for? We're waiting for the Lord. That's what we're waiting for. Wait on God first. How many times has God said that to us? Seek first what? The kingdom of God and him, his righteousness. Then after you wait, all these things will be added unto you. That's what God is saying to us. That goes back to that manipulation piece. I can't say, God, I'm waiting on you to bring my husband. God, I'm waiting on you to give me a raise. God, I'm waiting on you to heal my body. Just wait on the Lord. If you just wait on God, that's a lot in and of itself. Why? Because he's king. He's master. He's creator. He is potter. You are clay. He knows what he has planned for you. He's already designed your life. Why wouldn't you wait for him? God wants us to wait on him. Period. Think about that and let that resonate in your spirit for the rest of the week. God, I'm waiting on you, not with condition not with manipulation, not with all of these other people in the room. God, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting just on you. Because the surest thing about God is he always hears us and he'll tell you what to do. So it's wait on God first and then everything else. So you know what I got to do? Because this is what we do. This is just my little encouragement for the week. And I know that there's a lot of people who follow me and who keep up with the things that I'm doing. I do a lot of things in the entrepreneurial space. I love entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship is freedom. I will say that again. When you own yourself, you own yourself. When you own your business, you own your time. When you own your business, you own your money. When you own your business, you own your impact. There's never any ceilings. There might be some doors you got to kick in, but the sky's the limit when you own yourself. So I do talk about entrepreneurship a lot. And my success is because of my faith. It's not because of my degrees. It's not because of my networks. It's not because of anything other than that. It's because I actually believe the word of God. And in Psalm 130 and 5, David reminds us. He says, I wait. For who? For the Lord. My soul waits. 
Notice he didn't say my spirit or my body or my flesh. He said my soul waits. Why? Because that inner part of me, that's where a lot of that damage happens. That inner part of me, that's where a lot of my ideas are going to be birthed from. That inner soulish part of me, that's where I'm going to do the work on the earth. And so it's important that I get that guy under control. So who's waiting for the Lord? My soul. My soul is going to wait for the Lord. And what's going to give me hope? His Bible says, and in his word, in his word, do I hope? Listen, guys, I know we're all waiting. I'm the first person in line. <laughs> How ironic is that? I'm the first person in line. That means I'm waiting too. So I'm never talking at you. I'm talking with us. Why? Because God wants good things for us. He wants us to not continue to keep making the same mistakes. And when we wait for him, we position ourselves to receive and to steward the best things that he has for us. When God brings us out of this waiting season, whatever we're waiting on him to do in our lives, to just show up, to just be God in my life, to just take over because I've put so many things in front of you, God. If that's your prayer tonight and you know that you just need to tell God, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm out of order. I've put so many things in front of you. I don't even pray anymore. I don't know the last time I read my Bible. I don't know the last time I attended a worship service. I don't know the last time that I gave an offering. I don't know the last time that I had the Lord's Supper. I don't know the last time that I just did something else for someone else because that's what you asks me to do. Maybe that's where you are. And maybe that's why you're watching. It's because you put so many things in front of your relationship with God. And so now you don't even know how to wait just on him. You're so busy trying to make it work and make it happen on your own. You're just spinning your wheels. And maybe a little something good happens and you feel like that's the right way. And then 10 bad things happen to you. Maybe God just wants you to rest in him. He wants you to wait on him. He wants you to be focused just for a moment on yourself. And so my encouragement for you tonight, and I pray this has helped you. I pray this has blessed you. Is that while you're waiting, that you know what you're waiting for that you position yourself to be alone. Know that manipulation is not waiting and wait first on God and then everything else will happen. And so thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Cedric Cobb, it's always so good to see you, sir. He's doing big things, big things out in St. Louis. Best pocket square, uh, best wardrobe solutions, Shark Tank, what else are you doing, Cedric? I don't even know if you're still on tonight. Waiting is a process. This is such a good talk. Keep them coming, ma'am. I'm going to do my best, Cedric. I'm trying to do what God has asked me to do, and I'm trying to do it with excellence. Uh, LaVita Thomas. Uh, yes, ma'am. Pastor Reverend Dr. Prophet. Waiting is a part of healing. I honestly believe that. Waiting is a part of healing, and so it's important that we wait. Wendell Taylor says, wow, this was exactly what I was struggling with for the past year. Thank you so much, Kira. And I want to tell you, thank you, Wendell, for tuning in and for commenting. One of the things that we need to know is that we're not alone. The same things that we're def we're dealing with, someone else is dealing with. Uh, Tam Tamara McConnell, breathe, 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 breathe. God's got something good for Tam. I believe that, ma'am. I see you out there, Mr. Jordan the photographer of the year. Are you in Time Magazine yet? Are you in Time Magazine yet, Sam Jordan? You definitely need a personal relationship with God. Sometimes it's, it's hard for us to, um, to really find that. Uh, but the good thing is, is that God is waiting. God is waiting. As much as we're waiting on God, God is waiting on us. He's waiting to see us. And so Myron, it's good to see you. What's up, Shy town Waiting is personal. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Calandra Sumter, all the way from the big KC Mo, the minister herself, waiting is very personal. And we have to remember that. We have to remember that Carla Maven, God knows where I am. He knows exactly 
where I am. He knows exactly where I am. So listen, guys, I pray that you will continue to be strong. And I will listen to what God wants for us to, to do for encouragement for next week. I kind of got an idea, um, but I'm going to wait on the Lord. <laughs> I'm going to wait on the Lord. You guys take it easy. Be safe. If you can't be safe, certainly be careful and uh, make somebody else's day by smiling. It's free and it costs you nothing. Have a great night, Facebook, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.